Hi everyone and welcome back. So as we discussed in the first video, we are going to talk about the 12 factor app principles with the NetJS. So what we are going to do in the initial videos, we will try to create a baseline, baseline of NetJS application with a simple routes. We will be using typo RM, we will be using Docker and all these things. So we will go one by one all these things like uh, first of all we are installing NestJS. What we are doing is first we will install NestJS CLI globally. NestJS is a Node.js framework which will help us to write a simple microservice which we are going to use for applying the 12 factor principles which is about configurations, version control, deployment, uh, dev, production parity and all those principles we are going to apply. So once that is done, we will just generate a simple project and then after creating this project, we will do a lot of changes in this project for our requirement like we will introduce Docker, we will introduce TypeORM with the Postgres, we will write uh, some of the APIs, we will write entities, migrations, seeders, test cases, all those things we are going to write. We are going to introduce uh, ESLint with this. So let's say if I create uh, project then I think it will create a new folder or what I can do is I can go one step back and I can just do nest new nest CLI baseline okay it will not create a it will create a folder in my root and yes it has created some basic skeleton and it is using just by default and you can see it's a TypeScript project so you will see the all the different folders let's uh, go to that folder okay everything is cool now we can see we got a simple folder which contains a controller modules and services we have ESLint already set up pretty RC nest CLI package.json TS config and all right whatever the basic things which we expect all things are uh, available here now if you do npm run start it will be able to bootstrap our application now on top of this what we want we don't want like the very basic uh, skeleton we want to introduce the type rm and all these other libraries so our objective is to make this application uh, enough so that we can start uh, building on top of this for other 12 factor principles. So what all things we have to do? We have to introduce uh, Docker, all these things. So let's do one by one. I don't want to use an SCLI. An SCLI is just to show you guys how to get started with a basic project if you don't, if you want to start from scratch zero. Okay. So this is our tsconfig file and uh, this is our package.json file. We have a lot of dependencies here. So these dependencies are fine, but we will also add few more dependencies on top of this, All right? We are using Jest, we are using ESLint, and you can see ESLint RC here, which is dependent on the other ESLint TypeScript plugins, TypeScript ESLint. Now we are no more in the TSLint world, we are using purely ESLint. Some of the rules of ESLint are disabled, and here you can see these are the plugins which it, which it is extending TypeScript ESLint and it might be having a script also for the lint inside the package.json we can see npm run lint it is using all the folders and it is applying fix it is using jest for uh, running the jest is a test runner right so we are using npm run test npm run test watch npm run test coverage npm run test end to end so for end to end test case also we can write and we can test and format it is using prettier so we can we can stay with the prettier it is a very nice tool and it is using nest js now like nest script you might have used create react app right npm run build npm run start but i'm no i'm not a big fan of nest cli but yeah big fan of nest js we can get rid of uh, this particular script and the nest cli.json because we have our own script we have our own node moon which we are going to introduce so we are going to introduce all these things together like introducing the node moon all the other libraries which we need for our application bootstrap 
this video is going to be lengthy so we ready for that npm install minus minus save node mon first dependency which we are adding what node mon will do is it can actually run the application in the watch mode and we will also update our package.json and our ts config file we really don't need uh, two different configurations ts config and ts config json we can just have only one ts config file and here we can define the exclusion you can see here and i will explain what change we have done so this is ts config what it is saying exclude all these things include only those, those things which are coming inside src and test folders whenever i am doing npm run build i will create output directory dist and this is my target right and my module compiler modules is common js and uh, compiler is a typescript okay i have src and i have a test now we are building a basic skeleton of our project now what we will do is we will introduce all the other files like env.test so we have added env examples now next thing we are going to introduce is docker environment because we want our applications to interface with the postgres and type orm so all the other dependencies also we are going to introduce the other dependencies are like uh, what other things we are going to install is the type orm which is npm module so we can open another terminal and put all the other dependencies which we are looking for uh, in this project so you can see we are going to have dot env so i will include all those dependencies one by one npm install minus minus save dot env dot env cli which is really very important module and we are going to use pz for postgres and type orm this is another module let's add that right now winston for logging and swagger ui express i think that should be already there so install all these things and then we need to look for what all test dependencies we need to add already just is there we will see all those things so i will be splitting these videos into the multiple chunks because it is going to be very lengthy so also introduce uh, let's say for the testing like uh, type definitions for jest uh, type definition for ts node all these things we are going to add so let's now add a node mon file nodemon.json so nodemon.json file will contain our startup script so we already installed a nodemon module what this nodemon.json will contain is what needs to be executing what we are going to execute like we are going to watch src folder extension is ts and we are going to ignore the spec.ts while we are running the application and what is the main file if you see main.ts is the main file for the whole application and we are going to execute this okay we will introduce few more packages uh, let's go to our command line and uh, we will introduce go to our package.json we have typescript typescript path just we have nest cli type orm postgres now we have added nodemon.env cli these are the core packages okay we might need a few more packages which is moment package we are adding lodash eslint we already have in the dev dependencies so these are the packages now if we go to the dev dependencies here what all we have we are going to introduce one more uh, dependency uuid because we are going to have the uuid types so what we will say is we will add uuid then prettier super test and all the other dependencies we already have we are using jest 
not like NYC, Istanbul and Mocha. If we use all those things, then we have to add additional dependencies like uh, Jest, Mocha, Chai, Chai Spy, Super Test and all these things. So in earlier projects, I was talking about NYC and all, but in this, we are talking about only uh, Jest and Jest provides all different ways of mocking and all these things. Just provides us a nice, nice way to get the coverage, nice way to watch the, all the test cases. So we don't need to introduce all those sort of dependencies. We have introduced Node Moon. Okay, Node Moon is also dev dependency, not a, not a main dependency. So we'll just put that there. Node Moon, ESLint we don't need. So okay. Now we are good with the dependencies. Next thing we are going to do is introduce a Docker file. Okay, so for the Docker file, what we do is first we will create a Docker file. I mean, if you want to run your container on the Docker, then you can use this Docker file. And we are going to introduce a Docker Compose. If you are not familiar with the Docker, then just have a look at a simple Docker videos, which I already provided then docker compose dot override docker compose override dot yml and docker ignore docker ignore we are using so that we can ignore the content being pushed in the docker image okay so docker ignore we have all these files we have now we have all the runtime files like pretty rc eslint rc git ignore env, env.example, all those things. What we are going to have in the env, if you just think about, it's only going to have only two arguments. Let's say env.example, we are going to have our database name, database URL and environment. Same thing we can copy into env and we can have another environment file for env test environment, env.testing. That will have a test database. So the whole application is going to have a two database. One is application database. Another is a test database because we are going to run the end-to-end -end test cases also. Okay, and we have SRC test folder is there. Then let's set up a Docker. So we are going to create a Docker file. Docker file is plain and simple. We are going to create a Docker file from the base uh, Buster Slim image. So this is our Docker file. So this is a basic Docker file syntax. What we are doing is we are creating npm install, copying the package.json. We don't have npm rc, we can comment this. And copying all the folder to app directory, doing npm run build, exposing 3000 port. And we also created a user for running this and we are running finally npm run start prod command next thing is writing a docker compose file okay so in docker compose file uh, we can have both the containers running like node.js and the postgres these are the two con two services we are going to have so we can just say you do the build from the current working directory okay and then docker compose override docker compose override means rest all the arguments i'm specifying in the docker compose override i'm not writing it from the scratch because these things i have already covered in the couple of various nest.js videos where i'm using the nest.js with orms so this is the node.js and this is the postgres node.js container name what is the command what is the environment what is the port binding postgres the environment variables about the database names, database password, user, and the volume mounting, okay, and the ports. And for volume mounting, we are pointing to this uh, entry point.db file where we have a script that will actually create the database. So I will just copy and paste this. Docker utils and what the script is containing. These are just a setup, local setup, how to do this, because now we are using Docker. When you do Docker Compose up, what we want is both the test database and the application database should be created. That script is written here because 
the Docker Compose is looking at this file and it will execute this create user database, right? For the number of database, we have two database in the Docker Compose file for every database, it will create the, the database, set the user, set the, all the privileges for that user, okay? So this is how we are doing. So we, when we do Docker Compose up, it will spin up both the containers, but we want to run Node.js locally. We want it to have the Docker Compose. I mean, for the ideal world, you will also want to have the Node.js running inside a container. That is good. I mean, run everything inside a, inside a container. This is the node and we have Postgres. And this is the volume mounting for the Postgres. Okay. Now, what, when, when I do Docker Compose up, it should be able to spin up both the container. And once the it is starting the Node.js container, it will execute npm run start command. So we need to do the changes because now we are not using nest CLI. We, we are going to run the, we are going to run the compiled TypeScript file. So we are using node mode already. If you see in the node mode, what we have put node and we are using TS node. TS node is already a dev dependency. If not, we will add. TS node is already dev dependency. So node mode is using TS node to execute our TypeScript code. Okay. So when let's say, let's add the, the scripts in the package of JSON, what your scripts will be? Okay, npm run start, npm run build. So when, when I talk about npm run start, so I will copy these scripts and I will remove the pre-build, uh, pre-scripts which we already had. So start prod, start debug. We are not using nest, we are, I mean we are using nest JS but we are not using nest CLI scripts. This is by npm run start and when you do debug it will execute node mode means it will execute instructions from node mode JSON. When you hit npm run TSC, when you hit npm run build, what it is doing it is using TypeScript right to build the code which is written inside a SRC folder. It will build that npm run build prod it is the same thing like build or build prod is same npm run start production so when you do the build you are generating the files inside a dist folder you see this is the dist folder and inside this you will be running main.js file so this is what this npm run start prod is doing node dist main.js so when currently if i execute npm run start prod what it is going to do it is going to use node mode you can see npm run start prod or you can also do npm run start debug on local environment you will be npm run you will be doing npm run start debug it is using node mode right and if everything is fine it would be able to execute main.ts from source but when you are doing it on the production do it through npm run start prod right what it is doing it is using the compiled file dist src main.js okay so this is look this looks like our minimal setup we have done when you are doing npm run start npm run test npm run watch it should be able to execute test cases using just as a runner you can just do npm run test what it will do it will use just just as a test runner and it will execute all the test cases which are returned currently in the I mean the unit test cases inside SRC and the integration test cases from the test folder in the test you can see I have just e 2 JSON this file is explaining how to run the end-to-end -end test cases when I do when I execute npm run test e2e it actually hitting the actual APIs and testing our code. I'm not explaining how the NestJS works. I'm just creating a baseline with you guys. You can call it as a boilerplate, which is having the Docker type ORM configurations, ORM config.ts and all, and uh, all the deployment configurations, even the CI CD configurations. So we can talk about the 12 factor principles. So let's add few more dependencies like uh, class transformer, class validator, and uh, some dependencies related to a swagger, okay?
So what we will do is npm install minus minus save class validator. This is our first dependency that is, is going to use to validate the request payload. So it is same as the it is same as the join module which we have and then class transformer so the module name is transformer and then some some dependencies related to nest.js swagger so we are going to use these dependencies nest.js swagger and nest.js type ORM with the type ORM we also need to use nest.js module of type ORM okay and then we have to add a dev dependencies for the same so here we can add npm install minus minus save dev so these all are dev dependencies then the dev dependencies So once all the dependencies are installed, let's validate it. Uh, these are nest uh, JS code dependencies, swagger, type ORM, transformer and validator. env to populate the environment at the runtime. Express is a framework. Lodash moment is additional third party libraries. Postgres. And uh, this module is actually used to uh, delete a files from a particular folder. RxJS for reactive programming. Type ORM is for NestJS type ORM, UUID and Winston is for logging. And these all are my dev dependencies. So I think dependency chapter is now we can close. Now let's introduce some configurations for the ORM. So as we have discussed, we are going to use type ORM. So type, type ORM requires ORM config.ts. That file is nothing but that file talks about okay how you are going to put the migrations how you are going to put all the seeders, subscribers, right? And how I can acquire the database connection. So this is a simple ormconfig.ts. What we are having is DB dialect is a Postgres by default. We will pass only one simple connection URL, not username, password, blah, blah, four different arguments, just a connection URL. And then this SSL is required. I will talk about this later, like when we do the Heroku deployment. Logging is true. This is the entity directory means what all type ORM entities where we are going to keep them. So these are this is the folder where I'm going to put all the type ORM entities. These are this is the folder where I'm going to put all the migrations and subscribers. So this is the compiled file. This, this we are looking inside a disk, but in actual folder where, where it is going to be inside SRC, I'm going to have F folder. This is going to be my actual folder structure for my application domain. Inside domain, I'm going to have other things like entities. And migration, I'm going to have inside SRC. So I will create a folder. SRC migrations. Even we can have the subscribers. Currently, we don't have any. But if we have type ORM subscribers, we can create a folder. That's it. Okay, inside domain, we are going to have the other things also like uh, controllers, services and all. Services, DTOs. I mean, all the building blocks which you see in uh, NestJS. And SRC app domain, inside app, I'm going to have other modules also like auth module. Okay, inside app I'm going to have a DB module, then logger module, all these things. I'm talking about uh, the big picture, okay. So what we have done, we have created type ORM configuration and we have already decided the connection URL inside .env like this is the Postgres API development password. Postgres is the container name. If you now go to Docker Compose override, here we have defined the password, the username and the database name. This is the application database. This is the test database. So we have all the three things. We can build the URL and URL looks like this. 
okay this contains the container url but if you want to run it from the local you can put the local host 5432 now we have to check the mapping for the host you need to pass 5434 not 5432 5432 is a container port so if you want to run a con connect to this container from outside from your host system you have to pass 5434 let's say i don't want to use node.js on the container i want to run only postgres on the container then i will just comment all these things or remove and i will have only postgres configuration in the docker compose okay this is my docker file now most of the things are ready i can actually do docker compose up what it will do is it will look for docker compose yml file right it will see okay there is a postgres container then it will check the override it will see okay these are the username password and these are all the database i'm going to create i think uh, we already have this container running so what we can do is we can do compose down compose down you can install this docker plugin okay docker add-on or extension whatever you call it from the vs code and once it is done we should be able to do our task again so this is done this is still running okay now if i do docker compose up what it will do is it will look for docker compose yml and it will see the host port is free 5434 then it will start our containers containers is simple postgres container that we are going to use for our node.js application to connect through type orm you can see it is initializing the database starting the creating the database and everything is ready so we have two database created right starter api and both the database are ready we can check our post package.json currently we don't have a type orm scripts ready so what we will do is we will add the type orm migration seeders type orm cli scripts in our package.json and i will just copy them from my previous project so here is our type orm configurations if you can see what all i have added db migration db drop db migration generate db migration create db revert db sync db migration run so if you have any database migrations already created inside uh, src so what will happen when you hit npm run db migration run it is going to use type orm type orm command and then using this type orm command it is going to execute this migration so this is how the type orm command looks like it is nothing but it is using type it is executing type orm cli so type orm migration run migration run will look inside orm config.ts and it will check where the migrations are kept inside this folder src migrations this folder src migration there is nothing like that so if i execute it right away let's see what will happen now my containers are run running npm run db migration run okay go to your package.json db migration run right there is nothing to execute so no migration pending but if you want to execute create a new migration you can execute create a new migration using this npm run test it will actually create the new migration inside the src migrations folder you can see this is the default syntax of type orm migration right now we will put the actual migrations talking about a particular table having the primary key foreign key columns and the other columns okay for now we can delete it it's not going to be used so now you can see we have a migration setup seeded setups and everything okay now we have to create a folder structure of our modules like what code we are going to write then we will create a test structure how we are going to add the test test we can use to write the end-to-end -end test but for unit testing we will create all the unit test in the respective folders like domain we'll put controller controller test services services and services test 
okay and here in the root folder we will have a domain module.ts okay so objective of this boilerplate is just to explain you the cleanest way to construct a basic application microservice it will cover everything all the testing all the coverage scenarios all the health check uh, all different things which are required like different configurations for different environments migration seeders npm scripts to run the build test execute okay all these things will be here okay uh, let's see that in the next video thanks everyone